What's up YouTube? Welcome to today's tutorial in Blender Chromatic Apparition tutorial. Now, some of you might not know what Chromatic Apparition is, and it's that kind of color split you get with some lenses. Uh, it can really add kind of like a, I don't know, distort, like if somebody's hacking into a computer or something like that. I don't think I'm spelling this right. Yeah, I'm just going to spell it like that because I have no idea how to spell it. Okay, so if you were to look here, you see it's that color splitting that you get. Now, you can do this multiple ways. You can either do this in one way, which is that blur look, or you can do it another way, where you have it kind of like layered. Um, we're going to do a little bit of both. So, first thing, we're doing this tutorial in Blender. So, open up Blender. And, uh, hit control left arrow, and I'll bring up the compositor, check use nodes, and delete the rent render layer. Unless, of course, you're using your rendered image. I'm going to be using this image I pulled off the internet, which is a just some concept art. I'm going to plug this in and go to rendered image. Bam, it's this. Uh, I don't know what game this is from, or anything, but we're just going to use that. So let's set up our reroutes here, like I usually like to do. So drop that in, add a viewer, Oops. there we go. Now first step is to create the split image. So, go here, go to color. Actually, you know what? Search for RGB split. Or separate RGB. And drop that in here. Now, right now it's sending here. First off, set this to viewer. Now you're just seeing black and white because all we're viewing right now is the red channel. So, what we have to do is we have to first off add in RGB combine. So combine RGB. Oops. Now drop that in there, and you'll see that it's red all of a sudden. That's because now we are just seeing the red channel. So connect the last three of these up. Separate them a little bit because we're going to need to get in here. Now you'll see absolutely nothing changed. That is because nothing changed. We are not changing anything. We are simply splitting them apart and then merging them right back together in the same place. So what we have to do is we have to separate them and scale them at different areas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, uh, where is it, distort, scale. I'm going to hide this because we don't need any of the controls. I'm going to drag three of these in and I'm going to organize them a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it looks good. So, there's controls in here, but we're not going to mess with anything. What we're going to do is instead is we're going to go input, value, and then we're going to get this little note. This just gives us a number value where we can, tr can, bleh, can control multiple things. We're also going to add in a math node, and that is going to add, let us scale things at different places. So... I'm going to uh, spread these out. And I'm going to change this to power. So it's multiplying whatever this value is to the power of whatever. Oops, so I want this to be power again. Where's power? Now plug this up to the top value. The bottom value will be to the power of whatever. We're going to set this to 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and then point one and then just to make it easier we're going to select all these and hit H and then hit scale Y and we're going to uh, bring these closer together just a little organization now what we're going to do is we're going to click this to the top output and the bottom output of scale this is X and Y scale so we want it to affect both 
whoops, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Once you get the first one in, you can plug the second one in, whatever. Now, you'll notice there's a lot of chromatic, bleh, chromatic aberration going on. So, if you want to change this, you just change this value. And because it's going to the power, whoops, you can get a little touchy sometimes. You can, whoops, bring this down to 0.5 is default. If you go up, down is the most, up is the least. So you can see we have some chromatic aberration going on here. Um, but now we're actually seeing the separation around the edges. We don't want that. So here, for the original image, we are going to hit Shift D and drop in over one of these scales and drop in a scale here because we need to scale this up before it gets the chromatic aberration. So I'm going to actually duplicate this value, reset it to 0.5, and then plug it into the X and the Y. This way we can control both of them very easily. And we don't have to worry about anything like changing both values. This way we can just control one value and it evenly adjusts the scale. Just a little easier this way. So bring it up, uh, 1.05. Yeah, 1.05 looks good for this image. Again, this image will be in the image link down below with the package of the project file and everything like that. So, two things we have to do. One, if you look down here, you can see the chromatic aberration is happening everywhere. It's happening in this little rib cage area, and we don't want this in the rib cage area. We only want it around the edges where chromatic aberration actually happens. So, what we're going to do instead is create a mask. So, if you looked at my other tutorial, creating a mask is very easy. Just do color, actually input, RGB, make this black. I know you don't have to do some of these steps, but I prefer doing them because it's just easier. Let's see, mix, where's mix? Oh, whoops, color mix. Um, I just control it easier. So make a black image. Make another mix node. Connect this to the bottom, or top, which is going to go on bottom. Add a bokeh image. This will allow you to create a round. Just bump up rounding all the way. Go to image. Now, between the bokeh image and the mix, we are going to have to add another scale. So go to distort scale. Now this one we don't want of single value because we grant we're gonna have to change them individually. So you can either drag and drop in another viewer or I'm just duplicating one of the old ones. And I'm using this viewer. I'm just using it so I can get some precision down. Now, whoops, that's X. Scale this down, so like 0.95 maybe. That's good. You don't have to have it perfect. Um, you can make it as perfect as you want. Scale this up. Uh, remember, this is going to be blurred, so you don't have to worry about pixelation that much. If it ever messes up, just render it out again, and uh, it'll fix everything. Point nine five is good. Um, and point nine three, those are good for this. Now, we can just move this viewer off to the side because we're really not going to be using it. Um, and then we're going to go to filter, blur, and we are going to blur it. I usually go by 100, 100, and that creates a nice even gradient. And now if you run it through a invert, so color, invert, and then connect it, it'll invert the color. Now what we want to do is we want to drag this down a little more because we're going to be using a direct pipeline from the original image. I don't want that. Just separate these a little bit. More like that. So drop in a mix and what we're going to do is we're going to drop in the RGB. We're going to drop it behind. 
and we're going to drop this on top and we're going to put that in the output switch to that viewer now you'll see nothing happen because all we have is the top image just 100% solid opaque so what we want to do is we want to use this as a mask so drag the color output to the factor and now you'll see it's a little inverted that is because actually no it's not yeah it is so what we want to do is we want to change the order so flip the order and now we have it only on the edges where it should be but if you looked at the original one the chromatic aberration is smooth it's not separated this would be more if you're like getting hacked or something and you have a visor like I'm playing crisis a lot so crisis whenever they get hacked uh, whenever the aliens are near and their visors start messing up you start seeing it look like this this would be more technical but if you're getting or not technical more digital if you're going for a more organic look you're gonna want to add a radial blur so okay you know what you can figure out how to do it yourself I can't figure it out Actually, you know why I take that back shift a let's just add a normal blur see filter blur ah not directional blur filter blur and change this to like 50 50 no 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 more like 10 maybe and 10 not 20 change this like 3 and 3 that looks uh, maybe like 5 that looks good so that there's your chromatic aberration if you want to change anything like the distance that it is away from the edge all you have to do is drop in a scale right here so distort scale and then drop this in and you're gonna want an even scale for this so drop in another value so I can scale this up and down as much as I want Well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to set this at 1 for now because I like it. Oops, that's 2. I'm having my hand a little mess up. So, there you go. There's the full tutorial. Use the little math down here. I'm just going to arrange this a little better. And again, like always, the project file will be down in the description along with this image. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you in two weeks.